whether it's something we see or hear maybe read or even experience at some point in our lives we all feel that deep desire to be closely connected to God that is God calling you join us as we listen to the inspiring stories of persons just like us who answered yes to God's call we'll explore how God took them from where they were through their troubles, their trials, their temptations, their tribulations, and brought them to where they are today. This is why we believe. Hi, beautiful people, and welcome again to Why We Believe. The Word of God says in Revelation 12, 11, and they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. I'm Sherwood. And I'm Rhonda. And today, we would like to introduce you to our guest, Brother Maurice Huggins. But before we get into his testimony, let's just open with a word of prayer. Mm -hmm. Father in heaven, we want to give you thanks and praise for life, health, and strength. Mm -hmm. We, Father, today invite the presence of your spirit to be with us. We pray that your angels be dispatched and that they would surround us, Lord, and suppress the enemy where he may try to disrupt. We pray as this testimony goes forth, Lord Father, it would provide a, a blessing unto those hearing, Lord, that would truly uh, change their lives or even their thinking to recognize that they too can serve you. So bless each one of them in a mighty way, I pray, through your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 And amen. Brother Huggins, how are you this? How are you today? I'm just great. I'm just surprised to be here. <laughs> it wasn't intended to, but we'll yeah. it out. Yes. Amen. 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 So, Brother Huggins, tell us, tell us a bit about yourself. Who is Brother Maurice Huggins? Well, Brother Maurice Huggins, hail from the Martin, attend the Martin SDA Church, has four children. One wife, and I believe in one wife. Mm. Amen. Married for 26 years now. Amen. And nothing could come between our marriage. You know, recently I've been telling my wife we'll grow old together. I love it. So, <laughs> this is Brother Huggins, serve in all different capacity at the church, serve as an elder for over 20 years, first elder, serve in personal ministries, head of family life, stewardship, head of stewardship, I was awarded the best stewardship leader in the country mm. a particular year i think it was around 2002 around there mm. and i also serve in the deaconry department so i serve throughout the entire department of the church so i know the church inside out amen, amen. i'm not gonna ask you i think it might be easier to say where you didn't serve <laughs> but you know it's it's so good so brother Huggins, tell us um were you always in in uh in church no, I was never always in church, you know. What I'm about to say, some people might be hearing it for the first time, even some of my family. Mm. My mom came from St. Vincent and she met my dad, mm. who told her that he was not married. Mm -hmm. And they had a relationship and there I came along. And after I came along, he told her that he was, he was married. Mm. Wow. And he wanted her to get rid of me. And my mother was persistent. She's not doing it. Yeah, yeah. You know, and I grew it that it was a painful thing to grow it. And having grown up with my mom, now she went and reminded somebody and had a stepfather who was like a father to me. Thank he God. gave me everything. Mm -hmm. Taught me how to fish, how to fly kite, how to pitch marble. Took me to see the queen on his shoulder. Mm. He took me to see Hill Selassie. He mm. took me to Independence Parade. Mm. He was the father that is not the biological father, but was really the father, father to me. Yeah. Yeah. The yeah. father figure that you knew. That I knew, and when he passed, I missed him even more than my own dad. Mm. Wow. So, tell us, um, you know, after uh, that, um, that ordeal, what um or how did your childhood progress 
Well, my childhood progressed going to a Catholic school. Mm. So certain days you have to go to church when you go to yeah. a Catholic school, but yeah. we were undercons. So on Sundays, we go to the undercon church. And during the week in school, we go to the Catholic church. And hmm. some of my colleagues in school, they were acolytes. And I always admire the way they look and how they perform up there. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But one day I want to be so, but to me to be an acolyte, you have to be real holy. You know? Mm. <laughs> but the friends that I have, they were far from that. Mm -hmm. But yeah. yet they were up there, you know? And then by going to the Anacon Church, my mom decided, well, look, I have to take confirmation. So we had to go to lessons every Saturday. And you must attend a certain amount of Saturdays in order to be confirmed. Be confirmed yeah. And you must go to church Sunday. They'll give you a card, like one of them employment card readers clock. Mm -hmm. You have a card like that. So every <laughs> service on a Sunday, you take it to the priest or one of the clergy. And they would sign you as you was in church on Present, Sunday. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you'll do it for what, three months and then get confirmed. And I've got confirmed and I started going to the Anacon Church. But the very strange thing happened is I had a weakness for women. Mm. So I had a lot of women in my life. I was a taxi driver and I started having children. I'm not I'm not boasting about this to glorify Satan. Yeah. But I'm seeing it in a sense that people should will understand that do choose their life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right? So I started having children out with different women. Mm. And they didn't grow up with me. One group grew up with me for about four and a half years. And her mother took her, well, would say kidnap her illegally. Mm -hmm. And went to America with her. Mm -hmm. And I was so hurt by that, that I went to America behind searching for her because we had a bond together. Mm -hmm. I would take her to school. I would comb her here. I learned to plot women here. Yeah. So I could have plot her here and do all these things. Took her to England. You know, we had a bond. And in searching for it in America, you know, I just actually had a relationship with somebody in a telephone company. Mm. So I could get information, who number mm. she called the moose and whatnot. And I did get information and I went and I found that she was in America and I met her in-laws. And when I met the in-laws, I tell them who I was. And they were like, but you was to be this bad father, mm. you know, this tyrant father, you just beat your child, you don't get any child, nothing and whatnot mm. and thing, you know, this was the what they receive from the mother. Yeah. And then when I told them, well, it's far from that. I said, my daughter is well fed. She boxes her groceries. I take her to the beach. I show them photos of me and she in birthday parties and whatnot. Mm -hmm. And for some reason, they just say, Mister, we don't know who you are, but we believe you're talking the truth. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. So my daughter and mother had married to their, their son, and he was mm -hmm. in the army, and there was in a place called Kentucky. And he said, you know what? We're going to give you the number to call your daughter. Mm. And I did call my daughter. And her mother answered the phone. And she let go some kind of language that is not mm. pleasing yeah. to talk about. Yeah. But I said, all I want to do is talk to my daughter. And I was able to speak with her. Mm. And after I finished spoke with her and thing, you know, it, it was very strange that when I, mm. when I came back to Trinidad, I decided to use women. Mm. Because of the hurt. And... Just use them, just use them. If I get money from I get money from them, one night stand, wherever it was, I will just do that. Until one day it just strike me and said, when your daughter get big, would you like anybody to do that? Mm. Mm. So I started studying the word of God. Didn't know nothing about the Bible. I didn't know where to find a text. If you tell me to find John 3, 16, I didn't even know where that was. Mm. Mm. You know, and I said, you know, I said to myself, I said, you know what? They must try and send you with a God. So my brother was a pastor at the time in the Pentecostal system, mm -hmm. think Nazarene. And he helped me give me the very first Bible I get was from him. Mm -hmm. And I would call him and ask him questions and you'll tell him what tithes and offering. I'd say, but you real stupid boy. You paying tithes and offering and pastors driving big car and this and that and thing. And he going to theology school, he work in somewhere to give him a little change, mm -hmm. you know, to help him out and thing. But my brother and I, we are very good. We are very close. And I could remember I was working at a plumbing company and one of my directors was a Jehovah Witness and she started witnessing to me. But she told me things that even though I didn't know the Bible, it didn't make sense. Yeah, okay. She would tell me like it's only 144,000 will be saved. Yeah. And I said, but we have over 6 billion people in this world. Yeah. How only on God only save 144, you know what I mean? Then I decided, well, I will go with the Muslim. Because mm -hmm. I went close to the school I went to with the Muslim mosque was close by. Yeah. But then 
I get a fan of the Muslim sometimes when he feel misbehave and the Imam hear about it, they used to they used to get a little licking. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. So I stay away from that. Then I started going worshiping with a a little small group, a house group. And the head of the, the, head of the group was a guy called Percy Daniel. And but he left his wife when I was living with another lady, and they were mm. not married. And then one of the guys in the group had Sunday I would take a drive in the area that you were living, you sell bread and thing. And I see him drinking a carib. I said, well, brother, what kind of thing is that? Mm-hmm. He tell me nothing wrong with that, you know. He say a little wine good for the stomach's sake. Mm. You know, he quote script here for me, you know. Yeah. <laughs> and as I said, you see me, I had to come out of that. So I started communicating with my brother, talking to my brother and thing. And he would tell me little things and he would encourage me, but he wanted to bring me across the, on his side, you know. Yeah. And I still wasn't happy with that, you know. I never went to his church and whatnot. And eventually, my mom went to England. She used to be very sick in Trinidad and tell her, before you come back, see a doctor. Because she used to hemorrhage a lot. Yeah. And while she went to England, the week before she decided to come back, I she called me to come and pick her up. I said, did you see the doctor? She said, no. I said, I told you, go and see a doctor. Mm-hmm. And when she went and see the doctor, all the doctors in Trinidad used to be telling her, here's fibroids she have. When you went and see the doctor over there, they told us she had stage four cancer, she had wow. cancer, and stage four, mm-hmm. and they had to do a second opinion. The second opinion came back was stage four, so I had I flew up to England immediately, mm-hmm. and we get into one of the best hospitals in London, Royal Marsden Hospital, and that is where all the celebrities and things go. It's very costly. And her family started to, was helping. I was working at Uncle and mine and country money I worked for will go to help one mm-hmm. thing. And then eventually the family started to, they were starting to feel a kind of way where, look, we're spending all this money and she won't make it. Mm. So they started to rebel. Mm. And one day I hear them rebelling. I know I heard my grandmother saying, telling my mother she regret the day she invited us to the wedding. She wished the plane no. she was coming in it crash. And I remember that the, when I heard that, I told my mother, pack all she things, and we left her house. And I went by her uncle and mine. And I came back to Trinidad. I sold my maxi taxi. I was used to do a little DJ and thing. I sold all my DJ equipment. My mother had a new swim. I sold everything that I had. Yeah. I went back up to England, pay back those who were disgruntled, pay them mm-hmm. back the money. And those who were supportive, yeah. but I continued and we paid for my mother to continue she health. Mm-hmm. She survived it, and she survived. She was a cancer survivor for 33 years. Yeah. And she dressed died in 2020, May 21st, 20, yeah. 2020. When I came back from England, I came back with nothing, mm-hmm. and was starting life all over again. So I used to drive people maxi. Yeah. Yeah. I, you know, I was a good one. So every anybody will give me a maxi to, to drive. drive. Mm-hmm. If they want to go out, there, they go out and work today for me. And one day I was driving up on my maxi, and he tell me, you know what? Gordon is a real good one. Not, I'm not a church person. You know, I'm still hanging out. I'll take a little drink, casual drink, not mm. to be drunk mm. or anything. And he said, I'm going to let you work m- evening shift and I'll work morning shift. Mm-hmm. So I used to go home by his house and he will come home and bring him Maxi. And there I met my wife. Mm. She was doing somebody here. Right. And I am telling the person who, sh- who she do here, who she doing, introduce me to your friend now. Mm-hmm. He said, Gordon, I'm going to tell you something. You see this girl here? Just leave she alone. Mm. She is a Christian, and I know your reputation. Right. You know, <laughs> just so she tell me. And I, you know, teasing her red, so what she'll tell me, and like, give me your number now, you know, and because right. the Maxine come here, you know. So, yeah. But she ain't give me no number, and she was laughing, and I watching, she foot, you know, she want to address, and I, you know, I'd seen. Well, we, okay, when I finish, she here, you wait for money, you go and we see Maxine, and I'll get a free drop in tongue, and whatnot. You know? <laughs> so when. The Maxi came, the owner of the Maxi, I him, I get a sip, but I have a girl inside there, I real like her, you know. Mm-hmm. You say, leave a girl alone. Yeah. She's a church girl, like my wife's best friend, and mm-hmm. not on whatever. I say, but you my friend, or you always <laughs> move like that, you know. <laughs> but eventually, I didn't get through. And my father was an, ad- was an Adventist, about three years before that. And I call him and I say, look, it have this girl, she have a mold right by she by she chin the thing. She go into all your church. When I see she next tell she had one number. Wow. And I dropped my father to church daddy. Oh, wow. Never used to drop him to church. You know? yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, when he came out he could say, look, 
He said, I know the girl, she does sing and think plenty in church. So that kind of pump more people more, you know? <laughs> so when church over him, he said, she come along the aisles and he grab her hands. And he said, my son saw you and he like you and he want your number. And she gave it to him, mm-hmm. you know? And we started to talk on what, but she's a Christian, I'm not a Christian. Right. Mm-hmm. She has standards and right. yeah. remember I was using women. Yeah, yeah. I was just using women. And it wasn't the right thing I was doing. And then I'd come and develop a, a kidney problem. And then they sent me to do some tests and blood work and thing. And AIDS was one of the things that they would test for, you know. And yeah. I am, fr- I was uh, frightened, but yet I know, even though I was out there, I was smart enough to do the right thing. Yeah. You know what I mean? Okay. So everything come back good and whatnot and thing. And I invite, I invite Pauline, my wife, I said, here, I'm going to a church group to invite me to a, a sports day in Brazil. And if you had come, she told me yes. And I leave home early and went to pick up in Polo Spin. She wasn't there. Went back in the Walmart and pick up the people. <laughs> drive through Polo Spin. She wasn't there. We went to the sports group. She wasn't there. And late in the night, she called me from a phone booth in Mova. And she said um, she apologized and whatnot. She friends come and pick up by the beach. It was she birthday and whatnot and whatever and thing. And she invited me to come by her the next day mm. to have something to eat for lunch. You cook, you make it up by cooking. Right. Yeah. So I have a very good friend, very close friend, just came from away and he was by us this week. I said, here now, where you go with me and move on. And the person invited me for lunch down there. Where you tell me, well, what do you think about the mm. meal? So we went. <laughs> and she cooked up and whatnot and whatever. And when she done cook and I watched me do it so. Mm, you got your approval. Say thumbs mm-hmm. up, she could cook, mm-hmm. you know. <laughs> so we started off from there and still ain't going to church. She invited me to church and whatnot. But one night I was going home and it had a crusade up Covin Road in the tank. In the tank yeah. That's some tanks I could have picked on. You have two big ones mm-hmm. in Covin. And there was a big layer like a plane field. You know, they had that crusade here. And I used to just stop and listen. There's mm-hmm. a guy preaching there by the name of Brother Williams. And after the crusade, I would ask him all kind of question. Well, why you can't have sex before marriage? Mm-hmm. You know, if you love somebody, and why you can't do this, and why you must go to church or certain thing. And this gentleman, he could sit over, and this is all 10, 11 o'clock in the night. He would be showing me things from the Bible. Mm-hmm. And he, he, when I person in church, I could sit, will take off the lights on us. Mm-hmm. Living next door. Took off the lights. And we'll go on the street light. And all mm-hmm. 12 o'clock, this man showing me things from the Bible. And I used to go every night, but I never told my wife. Right. Mm-hmm. And coming on to the last week one night I hear a voice tell me read Exodus chapter 16 mm. and that was the rest night it is I think you should be arrested mm-hmm. I think right. yeah. and I don't know why the, what the voice said me read Exodus chapter 16 and I went and I read it and after I read that I was convinced that the Sabbath God's Sabbath is the true Sabbath mm-hmm. and the Friday night when they had crusade my wife came to visit she and her friend. Mm-hmm. And when they had the altar call, I went up. So wow. she was shocked to see yeah, me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the next morning was baptism. I left home jolly. I know I'm going to get baptized. I'm going to meet my future wife too. <laughs> you know what I mean? And I'm a person. I like to predict things and it does happen. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And when I was coming along, you know, I meet a gentleman who was a first seller in the church. And I tell him I'm going to get baptized. And he's telling me, he said, boy, you want to get baptized in that church, boy? Hmm. That church are murderers in it. But I didn't understand what he meant. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So when I went to the crusade, when I went to the baptism, I was talking to a friend of mine. They said, he referred to a brother in the church who was on a murder charge mm-hmm. and was released. Mm-hmm. And now he joined church and now he's a deacon in the church. Right. And that is what he referring to. Hmm. Yeah. I said, well, this man had no forgiveness, exactly, you know what I mean? Right. In his heart, exactly. you know? Yeah. So that caused me to read the Bible more on forgiveness and all these yeah, things and what yeah. and things. I got baptized in 1990 and never looked back. By the end of 1990, Tatamont election, they make they call up my name for deacon. Hmm. And I must say that hmm. when you're in a church, there are people that just put like as guardian angels for you. Mm-hmm. You know, this is this person you ought to take charge of. Yeah, so there's a sister so called Sister person. Montu. Yeah. Yeah. And she'd always call on me. She's deceased now, you know. I say they wanted to be a deacon. Yeah. But I was serious when I went in church. I was yeah. very serious. All the girls and things I had, I'd done and that right. life. Right. You know, finished that life and thing. And my friends was telling me that I wouldn't last long in the church. Mm. Even my friend in the Max, who I met Pauline by. Yeah. Mm. He say, knowing you, you'll get a few girls in the choir 
mm-hmm. and you gone. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But that wasn't so. And when you see God call you, you live your life out here, and God call you, you doesn't can't do nothing but surrender. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I had to surrender. And while I surrender, I take up the position of deaconry. And I lasted there for about three years and then was promoted to eldership one time. time, Hmm. I started to study and then I had some good pastors that was good mentors to me like Pastor Peter Morris, Mm -hmm. Pastor Mm McCoon, Pastor Jack, Mm -hmm. Owen Jack. I mean, a very spiritual man. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Pastor Roderick Thomas. They had really mentored me and grooved me and anything I didn't know, I could have talked to these pastors, you know. And we had like, Brother March on his disease, he would come just so and say, Gordon, you know, let me go and visit so so sister Sabbath evening. Now I knew in the church, you know, yeah. mm-hmm. but he take him under his wings, wings and we yeah. go and visit people that sick and shuttings and things else. And this man senior to me. Then sometime, you know, we have Brother Antoine and Sister Antoine, you know, they'll talk to me before someone they give me to write. I went my brother Antoine and say, Well, boy how to start off the sermon and he will tell me what to do one thing. Mm-hmm. And I always believe in when you're writing a sermon, you must study first. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And you must understand the original of the words in Greek and thing too because mm-hmm. sometimes people will get a misconception of certain doctrines. Yeah. So I used to do a lot of studying and I used to write my sermon like about one o'clock in the night till like five in the morning. Mm-hmm. Even when I got married, my wife used to call it me and she said, you know what? Come in your bed now. But those are the times I like to write my sermon yeah, because, yeah. you know, no disturbance, yeah. my phone won't yeah, ring and thing. And, you know, I just elevated in the church. I I was always close to my mother because when she came back here, you know, I was like 10 to her and what that and thing. Been back to England a few times stuff to do checks and thing. And my wife and I, we wanted to get married. And I tell her I don't want to get married. And we don't have a house away. Right. Mm. She said, why? Well, you know, so long we did in six years now. Mm-hmm. I said, but I cannot get married. I said, I was in the So we decided we're looking for a house away. Own. Now she was proposing to me now. Mm. Because mm. she tired of it. Right. And she had a very good friend that she used to go and do Bible studies and different people up on the hillside and thing. And she knew that we wanted to get married. And one day I was working taxi and she just flagged me down just on the road. Mm. And she say, um, and she shaking a bunch of keys. She said, "This is for your new house." Wow. Right, and I always dreamt I want to live in Diamondville. You know, I want to live in a ville somewhere. You know, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, they yeah. Can bring up children nice. And yeah. I say, you serious? Mm-hmm. She said, "Yes." She said, "Check my home." I drop off the passenger. I went home. I she and she came out to the house and thing. He also wanted to renovate and wanted painting and thing. I say, "Yes, I taking it." Mm-hmm. I take Paul in there, we went and we look at it and thing and we decided to renovate it. Now I suffered sign us, so we could not renovate it and live in the same house. So right. it took us about three years to renovate. And we renovated the house and we got married and we went away and lived for a while and whatnot. And even when we went away to live for a while, we were still active in church. The church mm-hmm. make me a deacon. Mm-hmm. Even I explained to them, well, look, we'll be going and coming. They said, I not whenever you're here, you're a deacon. Mm-hmm. When you're in Trinidad, <laughs> you know. And my wife and I, we grew. We wanted to have a child, you know. Ten years, going on ten years, you know, nothing was happening. And one year I was in California, and I saw this outfit. It's a little boy outfit, basketball outfit, Mark Lakers on it, and a little pants, and a little sandals. And I bought it, mm. and I bring it for my wife. I said, I saw his son. Mm. She stoops in, you know, she said, what's sunny, you know, yeah, what's this, you know? Mm-hmm. She went to the doctor to tell her, well, you know, she can't get pregnant and whatnot yeah. and whatever. I say, girl, with God, it, it's, this is for we son. Yes. Amen. So she went to a doctor in America and they put some dye and whatnot in her and take her to tell her and she tubes her block. And she won't be able to get pregnant. So when we came back to China, we started seeing a local gynecologist here. And he said, based on what he watching, the way they tell her, it's not the truth. Wow. He said he could get pregnant. So he had an, we had a, an, a program and thing. And she said, in seven months' time, so you should get pregnant. Exactly in seven months, my wife was pregnant. Mm-hmm. She had a little girl named Paula, but she born premature five months. Paul, my wife had a bag burst. And I took it on. Hmm. And 
I still have this outfit here, you know, and I see in this is so recent, and she tell me, boy, throw away that boy, you know what I mean? Because yeah. on her mind, she was under pressure. Yeah, yeah. Because she ain't get any dream Obviously. that we dream of, and I have just telling her about yeah. this thing. And we went back to the doctor and tell her in six months' time, she'll get pregnant again, and she didn't get pregnant. And it was a boy. And the outfit really was for wow. him. You know, he wore that outfit mm-hmm. till he all great, and we still have it. Mm. <laughs> you know, we never <laughs> part with it. Yeah. Wow. We still have it, you know. And we continue to go to church and whatnot. And I must say, we went through some things in the church. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. sometimes church is not where you always think it would be. But always keep your eyes on Jesus. Amen. Amen. You know, as you said that, Brother Huggins, I remember when we first came into church, that was the, the best advice that we could have gotten. Keep your eyes on Jesus. And we have to understand that it's not about, you know, all that you may see. But it's about your individual relationship with Christ. And that is what counts most. Mm. Go ahead. You see, I keep really, and, and you see, another thing you don't follow pastors. Some people come to church, and if they like this pastor, any pastor move, they move with the pastor. Mm-hmm. pastor yeah. You know, I stayed in a church. My wife always wanted to go and visit other churches, but like my neighbor, she was at Dingo Martin. Mm-hmm. You know, I always want to go to Dingo Martin and whatnot. And, you know, I will preach. Sometimes on a Sunday night, only two people come to church. Mm. And sometimes most of the people would unless might come and say, Well, look, they had to go out, they have a family trip to go on and they can't make it. And mm. I always fit in this. I will never say no. Faithful. I always Wednesday night service and we'll find Brother Hoggins here. Sunday night service will find Brother Hoggins here. And even when I w- hadn't become an elder, everybody still was calling me. Yeah. And my wife was saying, Well, God, but why they calling you? It's not an elder anymore. Mm-hmm. I say, well, you no, know, these people are custom me. They are seniors, and you know, some of them are custom to me and thing. Until I eventually call and give them some of the elders, and I say, listen, I'm not an elder. Mm-hmm. You have to call this person. This is the number and what a ton thing. But as Brother Huggins, you want to come and pray to still. Yeah. And I mm-hmm. have to go, you know, yeah. I mean, I couldn't say no. And mm-hmm. one of my strong points going to is visitation. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And Pastor Jack taught me that. He mm-hmm. was a very strong person in visita- visitation. Yeah. So I used to do a lot of visitation and what, not all by myself. As a man called a hell, they would say, Brother Shulon, we're going to visit Sunday. Brother Kissembe or Brother Oliveri. You know, those were fellas who would go with me on a Sunday and mm-hmm. visit people and give out tracks and things. Mm-hmm. And some if I go by a female person, do a Bible study, I'll carry my wife with me. Right. And do a Bible study. And between the years we went to church, my wife and I have seen a lot of our friends got baptized. You mm-hmm. know, some of my colleagues in work, you know, I witnessed to them and Two have gotten baptized, yeah, and amen. I'm working on one now. I retired now, but I'm still working on one, mm-hmm. and he still visit me at home. You yeah, know, yeah. So, just recently, one of Pauline friend wanted some Bible studies, and I, she asked me to go and do it. At I do some of the Bible studies with her, along with my wife. My wife do Bible studies with her, and she recently got baptized mm-hmm. too. Mm-hmm. So you don't have to be an elder, you don't have to be a deacon, you don't have to be a punished personal ministry mm-hmm. leader. To serve God yeah. or to win souls for him, you know? Mm-hmm. And when I became an elder, Pastor Roger Thomas asked me this question. He said, we are intervening for the for our eldership, but if he doesn't get it, what would you do? And I told him, I say, I'll be still a devoted Christian. Amen. Amen. You know? And I see, you know, when I see myself, no, I just remember that with Brother yeah. Thomas. Thomas, yeah. Because, you know? because too, you recognize the call is to be a co-laborer with Christ. And that is the call, you know? Regardless mm-hmm. of what we may do in church, the call is for you to be a co laborer with Christ and showcase Christ's character, whether it's in church, whether it's out of church, whether you're on the basketball court, whether you go to England, wherever you go, to showcase the character of Christ Amen. at all times. Yeah. And then um, having, having doing all these things, I had my Sabbath issues. Mm-hmm. When, I, when I became an Adventist, I wasn't working, I was doing taxi work. My wife didn't like it. All right. And she wanted me to come out of it badly. And the first job I get was from the Jamaican High Commission. Mm-hmm. was paying, that was in 1990, $5,000 a month plus overtime and mm. whatnot. That was good money back yeah. then. Yeah. But I had to work on the Sabbath sometimes mm-hmm. at all. And I turned it on and all my friends called me a fool. Yeah. Yeah. Even my friend, I said, okay, Maxi, for, because it was his friend who come on to the job. Mm-hmm. He said, but you real foolish boy. You was asking me to get a job for the longest while and now you turned on that. And God opened up our way where he sent me through the government service and mm-hmm. I started working there. Mm-hmm. And I worked there for years and I laid on my cards. The boss man, he would, 
he know a man Adventist, so he will not he will never walk on a Sabbath. But he'll use the other driver. Mm-hmm. And one day, the messenger didn't come to work, and they was going and the yes, they play away and thing. The big girl play with that they had, and she said, "Well, you know, the messenger didn't come, so you gotta go and play the mark for him." I say, well, go and tell the boss that Mr. Huggins say that he don't gamble yes. and he can't do it. Right. Mm-hmm. And the secretary told me, well, I can't tell him on that. Mm-hmm. He said, you crazy or something? I said, well, tell him Mr. Huggins says so. Put yes. him in front this yes. time. Mm-hmm. And she went and she told him. And when she told him, he didn't say anything. I was like, this might be my last day here, my last week. It was mm-hmm. temporary, you know? I and that man became very closer. Yeah. We had a closer relationship from that day. Yeah. Till he mm-hmm. do up recommendation to help me to get permanent in government service and whatnot. And then turn another time, the administrator retired and we had a new administrator. And this administrator, I don't know, she dressed probably didn't like me. Mm-hmm. And she didn't want me to work on a Sabbath until I'm not working on a Sabbath. And she went to this next director because I was changed director like every four or five years. And she said, Dr. Reno, one of the drivers having power hostage here. <laughs> he said, what do you mean by that? And they call a big meeting. And we went up in the meeting. And Dr. Reno said, well, Mr. Huggins, I hear holding us hostage. Where is the problem? I said, well, I arranged the other driver. I said, listen, any work that fall on a Friday night, Saturday, till the Sabbath finish, mm-hmm. you do it. And anything in a week holidays and, and wherever I go do it. Right. Now, he was living Barak poor. Mm-hmm. So, uh, truly, I used, to, I used to do most of the overtime. Mm-hmm. And he agreed. But this administrator want me to work on his Sabbath. They want me to work. Yeah. And she went and she complained. And then Dr. Renee said, well, what is he yeah. complaining about? It is settled among the drivers. Exactly. Yes. She said, I understand what Mr. Hagen is saying. No, my grandmother was an Adventist. Mm. <laughs> and I know what it is not to work on the Sabbath. Right. Yeah. So even my boss had some a bit of Adventism in her oh, yeah. Yeah. that was able to allow me to keep my job. Yes. Oh, yes. But had it been somebody yes. else, I would have done fall through the loop already. So when you stand up for Jesus, regardless of the consequences Amen. you think might happen, Amen. still do what you have to do. Yeah. In church, calls in my right name, you yeah. do what you have to do. Whether you're a guest, suck, whether they don't like you, you don't want to be in church, you know, to have little cliques and whatnot. Mm-hmm. I don't, I's no part of a clique. Right. If something happened in church, something I might be the last person to know. Mm-hmm. Because I don't try to get myself in no clique. I keep myself open. Yeah. And I always tell people, the church is a hospital. Mm-hmm. And in a hospital, you will find sick people. Even the doctors just get sick. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And they had to be tended to. So, when you come to church and thing and you praise and God, I remember a time when I was saying amen and thing in church and thing and people were looking back at me. But they don't know my life where yes. I came it's from. Yeah. To where God have me yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, yes. Yeah. You know, so I just always tell people, and my wife, she does it a lot. So when I was not ill anymore, my mother come and got ill with advanced for cancer in 2020. Mm-hmm. And she, she just lasted about three months. My wife was telling to her. Right. And that was in me. Me, she died. And by August that very same year, my wife beat her afternoon and cream and she skin. She found a lump here. Hmm. Right by she limbs note. And I said, we had to go and check it out, you know. And we went, we called Cancer Society, we make an appointment and they, they give us something about a week to come. And when they went, they do a they do the mammogram, they do the biopsy and whatnot came back showing her that she had cancer hmm. and it was hard for me to deal with in the sense that I dealt it with my mother yeah. mm-hmm. and now I have to come and deal with yeah. this and then I had to console her during it too because yeah. she didn't handle it properly too right. you know and they asked us to talk to the consultant the doctor in charge and whatnot and thing and God has been so good this very same doctor who we had to talk to he had worked in the hospital where my mom was in England right. I didn't know him then mm-hmm. and he tell us he said look your wife have a cancer called triple negative and that is the most aggressive cancer mm-hmm. she says a stage two and you have to deal with it as quick as possible he said he's going to do he could recommend surgery he said we could either go to the government service or we could do it privately but i couldn't go to court it was during the pandemic and we had a friend who had cancer a good friend of ours go to our church and he had it months before my wife discovered it 
and he didn't start the treatment yet. Mm. And then I said, you know what? I said, Pauline, you got to do this thing privately. And I'm retiring that same year in October. Mm-hmm. So she got cancer in August. I retired in October. Mm. I bought a retirement vehicle in June after I buried my mom and thing. And she's telling me, oh, God, you get the money from and thing. I said, don't worry, the money will come. I had some money saved and whatnot and thing. And the doctor said, look, he could do the surgery first. No, he wasn't marketing himself. He could choose whoever he wants. Yeah. But I felt comfortable with him knowing that his experience in the cancer mm-hmm. is a very long one. Yeah. And I said, you know what? Dr. Machel charged us to do it and, thing, and he gave us a quotation and whatnot. He emailed me the information and, thing, and he doing it at West Shore and whatnot. And we went and we did it. And when he do the surgery, the morning before the surgery, we call a pastor and he prayed at my wife the morning of the surgery about 8 o'clock in the morning. And the night before, we call up a pastor. Call. He called one of our pastors, mm. called from our former pastors, called the prayer turning. And my wife tell the doctor, he said, Listen, if when you go in there and you see anything unusual, remove the remove the entire breast. Mm. But I had to went downstairs to pay a bill. So when I come back up, I did nothing about that. So they carry in the room. So you for eight o'clock and I went to the back of the seat to pray. Mm-hmm. And right when the back of the seat there, a friend came to visit me who was very close to close to me. And we prayed and we prayed and we prayed and nine o'clock they didn't call. And about after nine, the the doctor called, he said, Mr. Huggins, are you any compound? I said, Yes, I don't by the sea. He said, I suspect you was by the sea. Hmm. I look at you this morning. And I know you will not leave your wife here. Mm. He said, anyway, your wife had mentioned to me that if she is there anything unusual, to take it out. He said, I know she is not the anesthetic. The cancer is deeper than he thought. Wow. So he will have to remove the breast. Mm. He already got her permission. He called him just to inform me mm-hmm. and to get my permission. I said, doc, do what you have to do. And so they removed the breast. And they cried for testing. And it came back as a stage three. And mm. this was in... From stage two to stage, it was just two and a half yeah. weeks. Yeah. You know? And from that, she had to wait six weeks for the heal and then start taking chemotherapy. And again, we had to do that privately because when you go to the government system, because of the type of cancer, again, you cannot wait and the bureaucracy you have to go through and whatnot. Yeah. And my retirement, I retired, and people who retired just take like some of them two years and two years to get their money. I retired the the 25th of October 2020. And the 27th of November, I was getting NIS. And the 10th of December, I get all my gratuity. Hmm. Hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. That had to be God. Exactly, God, exactly. That had, and I, I, I didn't know anybody who to push people right. to me, you know? Mm-hmm. And in fact, when I went to inquire, I went to the wrong set of places and they had to redirect me to where I have to go mm-hmm. and whatnot. Mm-hmm. And money came through, and I know. We had some insurance and they pay part and whatnot. It was a lot. It was hard financially for us. The guy who tell me, look, your, your wife do the surgery, your car in Trinidad. I don't know how you clear. You want to go in on. He said, you have Mr. Huggins. Me and you, I bought him playing cars for you. I knew you for years. I will bring in the car. I'll pay all the duties on it for you. I'll register it for you. I'll hmm. pack it in your garage. Hmm. And that man bring in that car and do everything. every single thing, register it, do everything. And I never paid him until almost like, eight or nine months after, Mm -hmm. you know? And I have seen God worked in my life in everything we do. My wife and I, we live abroad for some years and I was into trucking. And the guy who was trucking was an Adventist. And sometimes on the road, they're driving on the road on the Sabbath. And we used to be playing gospel sermons and things Mm -hmm. on the Sabbath. And I remember one year, we were driving and we were toting grapes from California. And when you turn in grapes from California, you have to reach, a, reach it at a particular time into New York or New Jersey, where we was going to New Jersey that time. And the reefer break down, the refrigerator in, in break, mm-hmm. broke down. And we had to go and get it fixed and we had to fix it fast. Mm-hmm. And we lost some time, so we had to make up time and we were really hitting the X to board. Aye. You know, and we were driving real hard. And there's a place in Pennsylvania where it has a lot of precipice and thing. And you must only reach it. If you yourself, if you yourself your, your eyes closed, you would know. Because that part of the road, you have it like how them iron wheel tractor is. Mm-hmm. They, they yeah, make grooves of, in yeah. the road. Yeah. So yeah. as the tires sit it, you'll yeah. get this rumbling yeah. noise. 
and we were going through there fast and we supposed to go through and as we reach in new jersey and we reach the market just when i'm about to reverse the truck into the bit of load the suspension collapsed hmm. wow and i said i called my wife and i tell my wife about it i said sweetheart you won't believe we just passed through Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, through some rough road and thing. And as you reach the compound, mm-hmm. the suspension collapse, the ball joint break out and thing in the vehicle. Mm. Had that happened there, and I said, God had to be good. Yeah, 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 yeah. God had to be good. And my wife have always supported me in my ministry. And one thing I could say, when you come into the word of God, Satan in plain. Yeah. Satan is serious. Yeah. And he's going to attack you. So you just send back people from a past behind me. Mm. Yeah. You know? Sometimes Paulie might meet them. And I say, the devil is a liar. I say, no, not this time. This is mm. the person I used to be. Right. Because people just look at you when you become a Christian, you could always fall back. Yeah. Mm. You know? But what I used to do, I do it no, no more. more. No Amen. More. You know, I stand up firm. I love my wife. I don't study no other woman, you know. I told my wife I had children before so she knew that she have a good relationship right. with them, you know. And I would say that if I to do and live my life over again, I would live it the Christian way. Mm. I ain't regret the things I do in the past. And that I say that I ain't saying that I'm glad of it and I ain't going to say that no yeah. praise. Yeah. Yeah. But it showed me both sides of the fence. Yes. yes. Yeah. So I could make a choice so, now. Yeah, if yeah. I had to live my life over again, I know which side I'll make it on. Mm. You know, and thank God for my brother who would always help me. You know, Pastor Peter Morris, sometimes I say, Pastor Peter Morris, I will learn some words in Hebrew and thing, you know, and what not. He say, you have Get a flash right for me, and I will put something for you, a, a dictionary with Hebrew and what not and thing. I know he will give me them things. Mm. Mm-hmm. You know, Pastor Jack, I'd call him and say, Pastor Jack, you know, well, what so and so. And we pray to come up in the office, we'll pray with you and then, because he's a very spiritual man. You know, mm-hmm. Pastor Thomas, I remember Pastor Thomas, you know, he would he was living by us literally. Mm-hmm. You know, when he come to church and he, he will spend the whole day in church and we'll give him keys for our home and he will go home and sleep here and his wife and children and yeah. whatnot. And, you know, he will talk to us as, you know, we as his own family, he treat us as a family. Mm-hmm. So while other people may not treat you the way you want to be yeah. treated, there are other people who would be there for you. Right and some of these pastors, when my wife was sick, they were there for us. Yeah. 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 You know, yeah. they would call their front house, she go in, you know. Sister Thomas would call to make sure Paul, you know, right up to, up to recently, she called the front house, she yeah. doing, you know. So, Pastor Emmanuel Peters, he's the one who baptized me. And he has tell everybody, I am his babe. Mm. Hmm. You know what I mean? He took me under his yes. arms, you know what I mean? Emmanuel Peters and you know, he was there. He has been there for me in the part of my thing. When he have a crusade, he calling me to put up tent and thing because I was a scout, so I know about putting up tent and thing. And mm-hmm. he had called me. And, you know, he, when he heard the, the different things I do in church, you know, he said, I was expecting that of you. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, but when I went so. in church, I just went in church to be just a warm me bench. Right. I want to say warm me bench. I n- was, I was a very kind of quiet person. I w- didn't want to go and speak on you. You, you were strong. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I was afraid of them things. Right, but for some reason, I just get brave. Holy the Lord just Holy put Spirit. everything Holy aside me. Then use yeah. a fellow called Brown say, "Here we go." Now we have in um some classes for young preachers, and I went to the class, hmm. and then they picked two other ladies in church to teach us English and whatnot and thing because I like to talk low class yeah. because the people you minister into in the area that I grew up is fellas on the block and thing. Yeah, so green you, verbs. you had to use a lot of green verbs <laughs> and you know you go to speak too eloquently and yeah. also I was that kind of fella and they said now nah, you had to do a little English and thing and you do mm-hmm. the English and thing and when the class finished and you're about to graduate Brother Brown say Brother Hoggins out of the class you know I want you to do a sermon for yeah. the graduation mm-hmm. I said well, why me look how much people was in the class he said no I want you to do it Mm-hmm. And yeah. from there, I think I just hit it off and I went on and on and on. Mm-hmm. And even though while you might use some green verbs sometimes, it's where you might reach some people. Yeah. You know, I always admire Pastor Yearwood, Clive Yearwood. Yeah. When he came in our church as a sort of intern, he used to use a lot of green verbs because he grew up on a block, he had a rass, you know, I mean, and whatnot. 
And he said, some people are telling all kind of thing, you know, you come back into the life you was on thing. Mm-hmm. But when he speak, give a sermon, it used to reach me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Even he though he didn't used to speak eloquently, yeah. I could identify with the man. And yeah. one day he, he used a phrase. He said, when God take our sins, he just cast it to the bottom of the sea. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And he say, and he take a flag and put it next to it and mark no fishing. Yeah. No fishing. <laughs> no fishing. I and that. I that stuck with me. Yeah, yeah. Who want to tell me about what I used to do? That is all a problem. God put that down to you, but I see I never flag and mark no fishing. If you want to fish and dig it up, that's on your view, yeah. not on me. You know, Amen. Ella Huggins touched on a lot of things that, that was really relevant. One, when he spoke about the fact that this man, this elder, after the crusade, stayed with him mm-hmm. after 12, yeah, studying, studying under right. the street lights. And you know, I wonder if there are elders who are doing that today. Mm-hmm. I wonder if there are elders who are willing to do that today. You know, the fact that you're so dedicated to winning yes. this soul for Christ, that he was willing to stay there with you at that time. Another thing that, that, that the elder spoke about that really stood out to me was the love for his wife. Yes. You know, even when she went through the surgery, he went to the sea, and I, I am sure that he was praying and, you know, just waiting on God. And then this last thing with, with, with forgiveness, the fact that when you ask God to forgive you, and he puts that in the depth of the sea. Yeah. Who wants to dig up that? Yeah, Who but, could dig up that? Like Nobody the, could dig up that. I like the part when he said um, the... They put the flag there. Yeah, say yeah, no yeah. fishing. No fishing. <laughs> no fishing. No fishing. That's what I say. It stuck with me up to this And, and sometimes, like you know, some of us need to know no fishing. Yeah, yeah. Because we always tend to look at people at what they did in the past and not what God has transformed yes. them to be now. You know, so I like that. No fishing. People, no fishing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the, the thing about it too, while my wife was doing treatment, when my brother came and visited us just before we came here, home mm-hmm. by me there. And I was telling him that when my wife went and take chemo, mm-hmm. he would five, six hours mm-hmm. to wait on her. Yeah. While everybody will drop their patient for cure. Because my daughter about eight chemo patient one time. They will drop off the patient and, and they will go and they will come back. But I couldn't leave my wife. Mm. I used to sit in a room right next door there and I'll have my books to read in. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, you tell her, I like to read a lot. Yeah. My wife could tell her, I read a lot, a lot, a lot. And I'll be reading and whatnot. So I was telling my wife, my brother about it the other day, day and thing. And he said, boy, he could have never do that. Hmm. He said, if he love his wife, you know. But if his wife had to spend five, six hours there, he'd go in and come back. But I hmm. couldn't go. And it's same with my mother. And my mother had cancer. Mm-hmm. I used to stay in the hospital whole day. Hmm. I had to drive an hour and a half. Go in the hospital, spend whole day there. And come back in the night. Yeah. You know, and... I learned something that there is no price on life. Mm. Don't care what it costs. And you have to spend it on your health. Spend it. God, you don't know. God, when people are thinking that you ain't going to make it, <laughs> God saying different. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And nobody's, we, them didn't send a contract with God on your life. True. So with my mother, people shock to know that my mother lived that long, yeah. 30 years. And members of her family have passed with cancer. And they didn't last as long as my mom. Yeah. They just yeah. got it and they just, they just went. Died. Hmm. And they just went, you know. And I ain't boasting that they're gone. I ain't like, was I miss them? Yeah. You know, because they were some of them were dear for my right. mother, you know. But to show you how, you know, cancer and things, when I tell me my wife was going through the cancer thing, I was losing a lot of friends. And I lose my uncle in that period of time. And that uncle was very close to me mm-hmm. and was supportive and financial and with my mother. I lost her. I lost him. I, I lost my mother's sister, the youngest aunt, during that period of time. Mm. Then I come and lose her uncle a year ago. Well, less than a year ago. Because he died last year, and he, yeah, last year, December. And then I just lost another uncle mm. two weeks ago. Mm. So, right or wrong, plenty of people were just falling down like flies. Mm-hmm. Then there was a sister in Marvel Church that I was, I used to go to to collect things from. And she had cancer around the same time with my wife. Mm-hmm. And they do the reverse. They did the chemo on her, and then she was with them for surgery. And because of the pandemic, they keep delaying it, delaying it, delaying it, and she eventually died. Oh, wow. You know? So we have a lot, my wife and I have a lot to of praise God. Yeah, 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 yeah. We really have a lot of praise God. God has been with us. You know, there are times that we needed people to come and pray to us. We wasn't getting the prayers from the people we were looking forward to come. Mm-hmm. But God would have sent people from other yeah, churches. Yeah, yeah. And they will come and pray with us. They will come and 
cook and thing, you know. Mm-hmm. The meals that my wife needs to get on thing was I'm not a person who likes cooking. Mm-hmm. And they would come and cook and thing. People from other churches from all over, all Valencia and thing, come and spend the whole day with my wife. And they would rotate it and whatnot. So, you know, I would just say to this that when people are sick, do your best. Yeah. Don't matter what it costs. Yeah. Because today, when I hear my wife testify in church and thing today, and she born an email and whatnot, I know people might say, no, we should get on so, but they may know what she's been through. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 You know? But let me ask you this, Ella. What, what kept you? Because your, your wife is there sick, your, your friends, your families are, are dying around you. What kept you, you know, with that faith that God would heal your wife? What kept you standing strong, regardless of the situation around it all went back to my mother. When my mother was sick, I sold everything I had mm-hmm. to keep her alive. And my mother was a strong woman. She was very thin, very, very thin. Mm-hmm. And she she eat very good in her young days. They grew up into gardening and home, you know, big agricultural land and they'll eat the provision and milk. And when I see my mother pull through, Knowing where she from, my mother was a stage four cancer. My mm-hmm. wife was only stage two, mm-hmm. going on stage three, mm-hmm. and at the end of it, she was stage three. Mm-hmm. So my mom was stage four, stage four, and she and I didn't make it. Yeah. yeah, you know what I mean. And my mother pulled through. So I used to encourage my wife, and there's something I must admit. You know, my wife is here, but I'll admit it. There are times, you no, know, I had a very close relationship with my mother, and I would go on to go and look to my mom and what until my wife sometimes would be annoyed. Mm-hmm. She would say. Them don't live the age already and what mm. thing, but she couldn't understand. Yeah. yeah. She never understood what the relationship we had. Yeah. Right? My mother did fun of me for everything. Right? And it's only when my mom got sick and my wife got sick and the care that I give my wife, yeah. then she, she fully understood. understood yeah. You know, the shaky yeah, hand yeah. she fully understood the kind of man that I yeah, was yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. and how devoted. Yeah. You know? And you know, as as he said that, I have to say to the youths, look at the way the men treat their mother, and you will know how they will treat you. Yeah. I have to say that to them. Look at the way in which the men treat their mothers, and you will know how they will treat you. Ella, I just love that point that you made. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's a serious thing. Yes, it is. It is. It, it is. is a serious thing. Maybe I'm showing sometimes, you know, you, 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 everything you're doing is privately. Yeah. Everything, yeah. you know, you, you, you have to go and do a... A pet scan, you're talking about sixteen thousand mm. dollars. My wife was doing chemo every week, you had to find fourteen thousand dollars. And then mm. you have one called AC, she's supposed to do it every week, but she body couldn't take it anymore. So we're doing it every two weeks, and that is nineteen thousand eight hundred every two weeks. And you had to find that money, yeah. you know what I mean? Mm. And God was providing it, providing. you know. So I can't turn my back on God. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes my wife worrying where we get any money from. I say, sweetheart, we're doing it private. We're going to do this test private. When we went to do the pet scan, the people tell you $16,000. My wife got a pet scan and we didn't pay a cent. Amen. Amen. We didn't pay a cent. The power of God. Amen, yes. The power of God. You know? Mm-hmm. She had us to do, while she doing chemo, one thing, you had to go and check the cardiologist. Because they had my heart had to be good, they liver had to be good, and the thing. they had to be monitoring, mm-hmm. they had to be doing yeah. God work and thing. And those things were causing. Yeah. Sometimes, when she had the last, second to last chemo, her veins collapsed. Hmm. And she had to put that thing in by her heart, you call her port. And that alone was $15,000. Just to take two more chemo sessions. You know? yeah. Yeah. And when she take the second to last one, they come and get infected. And she had to go and do a surgery now. Yeah. To get rid of the infection. So she went through a lot. Yeah. And sometimes she has wonder, she'll say, Honey, I know I'd be appreciative of all the things you tell me. Sometimes we may fall out and thing, but at the end of the day, she'll say, Honey, I really love you, you know. Yeah. I really appreciate the things you do for me because I stuck with her. Mm-hmm. And it's only because of the love I had for my mother and mm-hmm. I went yes. through with my mother, I was able to replay it. You know? while mm-hmm. she was going through it and I any kind of doctor she going to any doctor appointment whether it's cardiologist whether it's blood whether it's whoever she go in mm-hmm. I am there yeah. mm-hmm. and still is mm-hmm. you know and, what I mean and, and we must add it's only God could have given you that love yes. for your mother and for her 
you know so at the end of the day we give god all yeah. the praise for the Only man god. that that, that you know is. you were transformed into yeah, yeah. you know we we must ask the elder the question because of course we are going to have his wife and she would give her testimony as to what we went through yeah but sure when i would allow you to ask the, the okay. elder all right brother Huggins. i mean you have told us a lot and it showed us exactly um the the trust the belief that you have in god but mm -hmm. i ask you and i would like you to reiterate and let everyone else know why does brother maurice hoggins believe mm -hmm. well i would say this eh? there are so many bible texts mm. that kept me going through in my career yes yeah. right when i study how the enemy had attacked me along my christian journey mm. and i remember james 4 7 Submit yourself, therefore, to mm. God. Resist the devil, devil and, and he will flee, flee from you. Amen. You know, when you study 2 Chronicles 7, 14, you say, if my people, mm. which are called by, by my, my name, name mm. shall humble themselves and pray Amen. and seek my face and turn from the wicked ways, yes. then I will hear from heaven and forgive the sins and heal the land. When I'm saying that, I just put personalized and put my name. Yes. Amen. Right? So mm. when I see what God has done for me, when I see that, where God has taken me for using women and doing all these things. <laughs> and what I forgot to mention, two of the women that I was with many years before, mm -hmm. some years after died from AIDS. Wow. Mm. Two of them. Mm. I was with them many years before. Mm -hmm. They died about 15, 20 years after. Yeah. I seen, but that I could have been. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. know what oh, I mean? Yeah. Yeah. So when I see where God take me from, when God take me that truck and the whole suspension drop down, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Even when you're coming up here tonight, this afternoon, a man make a U turn by chocolate by West Mall. A U turn and I am green, and, mm -hmm. and it have no U turn. The chocolate there goes straight by yeah, West Mall. Yeah. And he turned around there in front of us. It's only God. Only God. So I have yeah. no choice to believe that God has been in my life from since I become a Christian, yeah. and I will never leave Amen. or do anything else. Amen. Paul said to us, he said he thinks he, 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 he's supposed to do, he has find himself not doing it in Romans chapter 8. And he thinks that what he's supposed to do is what he's doing. Mm -hmm. It is really take a true converted man to reach that point. Yeah. Paul was surely converted yeah. mm -hmm. to reach that point, to admit. Yeah, son? When he, 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 God said, uh, God tell us, you know, I can do all things through all Christ. Things. Strengthen me, yeah. You know, so all when things. I study all his promises, you know, <laughs> anything you want, just ask. Mm -hmm. Yes. You know what I mean? And reading again, God has led me to read. So that's one of the reasons I believe in God's word. It's mm -hmm. pen and inspiration. The books are there. There's two books I just read. I'll tell you, Brother Sherwin and Rhonda, if you only have these two books, get it. Christian service mm -hmm. and a sanctified life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? When I read Christian service, I was just reading the other night, and it says that many stars that we used to admire, many bright stars, mm -hmm. They will go, go dark. Yeah. They'll go dim. Yeah. Hmm. You know what I mean? That is yeah. from um, volume five. Any testimonies, volume five, page, page 81. Mm -hmm. So when we study these things and God showing me these things, when it was last day events, the Twin Towers in America that was destroyed, yeah. Ellen G. White spoke about we'll that about mm -hmm. in last day events. When you read that book and you'll see it right there. Mm -hmm. So I believe because God's word is true. It is. And there's there's nothing to test it to see well hmm. it's a second tate or a third tate. God word is the foundation, it's true. There's no no other nothing else to beat by God word. Hmm. And God has been with my family. Hmm. I've seen it day after day, and I'll continue to trust him. Amen. amen, amen. My brothers and sisters, you have heard it. Brother Maurice Huggins, hmm. a man who lived a life in his early times using women but the lord kept him and brought him to the point where he united him with a woman hmm. not just any woman but a beautiful woman where he could not have resist <laughs> god has placed him in a position to even give his life to him where he seek god on his own through the willingness and the, the eagerness to learn more about the word of God, dear God have placed pastors 
evangelists yes. in his path ones who individuals who were truly committed to teaching him the word of god and there my brothers and sisters though he had many questions they were answered god has kept him he was placed in certain situations where he almost lost his life yes he gave his life to god and there the enemy was angry my brothers and sisters the word of god tells us that even as we give our lives to him it would not be an easy task but what we need to do is to continue seeking god stand for him and he would stand for you again there he was a trucker and though he was on the road when he finally reached his destination <laughs> all i can say that this is god everything happens for a reason the enemy came at him again his wife developed an ailment but through his prayer and constant supplication god has kept him kept him strong and keep kept them both strong and even provided for them financially and i can only say through prayer this is why brother maurice huggins believed and the word of God says in Revelation 12, 11, And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. Let's pray. Let's pray. Oh, Father, we thank you, O God, for your Son, who came and testified yes. of your goodness. Father, we pray, O oh God, in a special way that you would keep him, that you would strengthen oh, yes. him, and that your Holy Spirit would empower him to continue to work for you. Father, we pray even as this testimony is aired, yes, Lord. that someone who may be, may be going through similar struggles may come to know that you are a prayer answering God. Yes. And Father, you would showcase your glory and they may come to surrender to you. So allow each viewer, each person to come to that place of total submission and surrender as they pray and offer their petitions to you. To know that you are a prayer answering God. So we thank you, we honor you, we glorify and magnify your name. In Jesus' name we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. 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 Amen.